Welcome back everyone, I have an update for you. In my last video, MR BIOS vs XTIDE, I had 12 hard drives fail to recognize with MR BIOS. And this is kind of troubling because it really didn't make any sense. And lucky number 13, which was the original hard drive from that Fortiva 5000, well that one worked. And I'm here today to explain what happened. Thanks to all the comments and suggestions that I got, I retested everything, and in the process of doing that, I discovered what the problem was. I'll get to that in a second. First, I want to clear up a couple of problems that I had. This pile of hard drives came from a lot of computers. That was when I first started this channel. And while I was retesting, I discovered that this hard drive is no good. It just makes the click of death. And the reason why this 160 gig drive didn't work with XTIDE even is because it doesn't work at all. I used an external enclosure and, well, nothing. Absolutely dead. So I dug through my stuff and I found a 10 gig drive and I found a 120 gig drive. And they all worked just fine with XTIDE. No problem. Okay, well, except for number 7. That's a Western Digital WD400 40 gig drive. This drive, I'm pretty sure, came out of one of those Pentium 4 machines that I was happy to let go. XTID recognized the drive and then started to boot into Windows XP, which it is not able to finish off. Because this is a 486 machine with a DX266. So I went through the whole process, you know how it goes, you gotta delete the partition, start a new partition, reformat the drive, and then I did the fdisk slash mbr trick. And when I restarted the computer, it would not boot. I even repeated this process twice just to make sure I didn't screw something up. When this kind of thing happens, whether it be a CF card or SD card, I pull out my DOS 7.1 disk and I reformat with that. And something about rewriting the MBR code seems to snap them back into life. And as I anticipated, yep, it came back to life and I was into DOS 7.1. But I want 622 on this, so I've reformatted the drive, I did the master boot record rewrite, and that's as far as it went. So I went back to 7.1 and I set the drive aside and moved on. I only have so much patience for these old hard drives anyway, so we'll look at that some other day perhaps. And after I couldn't get the 160 gig drive working, I wanted to see if something of that capacity would work with XTIDE. So I found this WD1200, which is 120 gig. And absolutely no problem with this drive. Verifying that this machine from 1994 can run a 120 gig drive, no problem. No problem with XTIDE. So as I mentioned in my last video, I am so new to this MR BIOS thing, but man, am I thankful that these files exist out there and that they made these things accessible. And this brings us to problem number four, the obvious problem I overlooked and why I made this update. Well, now I understand why this doesn't work. This didn't even occur to me that it would be a problem. And then what I realized is this is from 1994. It is not a recent BIOS by any means. And XTIDE is being updated as we speak, essentially. So because it's from 1994, you know, there's a limitation to hard drives. So I was going to figure out the geometry for all the drives and then insert that. But then I realized there's, there's no way to do that. You can only choose the size of the drive or the type. Wrong, absolutely wrong. When I was reviewing this footage, that's when I realized there's two types that are programmable. Just like every other BIOS that I've ever dealt with. But it doesn't matter, and I'll explain why. When you use the auto detect, it automatically stuffs that information into type 47. And the 7751 cylinders there that is taken from my 4 gig CF card. Then I plugged in my 20 gig master drive and ran what IDE. I then took the 16383 cylinders and stuffed that into MR BIOS. And of course, what is probably not a surprise to anyone else, it, uh, it doesn't work. 
It just hangs at starting MS-DOS and doesn't go any further than that. So I went back into MR BIOS and I stuck in the 7751 for my 4 gig drive. And lo and behold, yes indeed, a 20 gig drive will work on this machine with MR BIOS. And if you do a YouTube search for MR BIOS, ironically, my video is the first one that comes up. Now, there's really not very much information about it, so eh, I was kind of guessing on all this. So I ran the rest of the hard drives through, all 12 of them, to see what the results would be. And number three there, yeah, I got a disk I.O. error. Number seven with DOS 7.1 on it. Well, wouldn't do anything, just flashing cursor. And the biggest disk, the 120 gig drive, mm, same thing, disk I.O. error. But I am using the wrong geometry on this, right? So maybe that's contributing to the fact that three of the 12 just refuse to work. Now, out of curiosity, I decided to push that cylinder number as far as I could to see if I could still get that 20 gig drive to boot. And the number I finally settled on was 8192. And the 20 gig drive booted up successfully. And if I raise it even a single digit up to 8193, it goes back to hanging at starting MS-DOS. I decided to reformat my 4 gig drive with two partitions, and I forgot that I had left it at 8192. And it gave me all kinds of errors on the second partition. So I restarted, I set it to 7751, and absolutely perfect. Little information that I did find was suggesting to use the DDO, but that's for someone else to try because I don't care about hard drives. I've had enough. CF card works on this machine, and that is what I wanted from the start. And if for any reason I need more than 4 gigabytes on this 486 machine, well, then I've got a few options. This is the problem as I see it. I've got a pile of dead drives now, and some of them are new and some of them are old. The only thing I have left that's under a gig is this noisy Fujitsu, the original drive from the Fortiva 5000. So if you're like me and you don't have anything under 4 gigs you want to use, yeah, I guess using a DDO with MR BIOS is a viable approach, but if you don't want the clutter of a DDO, then just go with XTIDE. As every day passes, there's another low-capacity drive dying off in the wilderness. But when it comes to CF cards and SD cards, there's still plenty available that are under 4 gigs, so you can use MR BIOS without any kind of an overlay. So in conclusion, if you've got an old persnickety machine that refuses to accept anything that you give it, there's MR BIOS and there is XTIDE. You don't have to take no for an answer. You can make that machine do what you want it to do. I hope this update has wrapped up any kind of confusion that I may have created. And I hope it might help somebody who wants to escape to the